today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about textures. Now we can create texture with our quilts and things with our quilting, but this is texture more with the fabric. So I've made a little sample here with some little pleats, tucks, I'm not really sure which ones they are, um, that I've sewn in a couple of different directions. So I just thought I'd show you how to do that. It's not a hard thing, a uh, little bit time consuming perhaps, but you may find you've got um, a quilt or maybe a bag or some item that you'd like to have a little bit of texturing on, on a jacket perhaps, um, and this will just show you how to do this sort of texture. So I'm working on some nice linen and cotton fabric here, and initially I'm just going to actually draw some lines um, that I want to make my pleats go along. So if I had this round this way, I'm not sure if you can see that, um, but I'm going to draw some lines along here. Now I've lined it up so that it's straight with my board so I can use these lines to draw them. And I'm just going to, I've just got a, a lightweight pencil here and because I'm on linen it's actually not going to show. You might find you want to use something like a water erasable marking pen that would come out. Um, but for today I'm using the pencil um, because it's not going to show. So I'm going to draw half a dozen lines here. I've got there four. Five. There may be other ways to do this, but this is how I've worked out how I would do it. So I've got six lines drawn there, and now I'm just going to bring the iron over, and I'm going to press at each one of those lines. So I'm not sure if you can see those lines um, there. They're, they are fairly faint. I've specifically kept them quite faint, but I want to iron each line. So I'm just going to pick that up and pinch it and fold it back right along that drawn line and then I'm just going to iron that and you want to give it a good strong iron because you want it to stay there and then I'm going to do the same with the next one now yes that may flatten out that other one a little bit but because you've ironed it quite firmly it'll stay enough for us to be able to use it so I'm just going to iron all six of these lines this is this is a, a fun little technique. I've actually made jackets and things in the past that have had things like this in it. But also on a quilt, on a softer fabric perhaps, it would be very nice. Um, with all the different things that we're doing with quilts these days, everything's sort of crossing over. And you can make some very interesting items using some of these different techniques. Even just some small samples or on a table runner perhaps would be a nice idea. Okay, one more line to iron, and then we'll go to the sewing machine. So, now you can see I've got all my lines more or less um, in place. Some of them have softened a little bit, but they'll be fine for us to pick up and sew against. So I'll just move the iron out of the way, and go to the sewing machine. Now what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to start at this end, and I'm just going to do using a quarter of an inch to the edge of my fold. I'm going to sew a seam line along, quarter of an inch away from the fold. So just using my normal quarter inch um, system that I use for patchwork. I'm just going to sew along there. And then I'm going to do the same on all six of these lines. Um, but I'm going to do it so that I've got it this way, so that I c I've got that pleat on top like that and just to the left of where I'm sewing. Because if you leave it, if you do it the other way around so that it's sitting underneath, it tends to want to bunch and be a little bit hard to sew because it gets in the way. But on top you can see where it is and it behaves quite well. So again, another quarter inch from the fold. Creating textures is quite good. It's a little time consuming, but it means that you don't have to have an amazing array of fabrics. You could do a whole quilt with all different textures and things on it, um, and really only using a plain fabric. And 
just a couple more to go and then we'll do the next bit. six but of course if you're wanting a longer piece you would obviously do more and I've drawn those lines one inch apart um, and I've taken a quarter inch um, tuck in each one where I've um, stitched them which means that we've lost half an inch for each tuck if you're trying to work out measurements and things you lose half an inch each time you put one of those little pleats in now I'm just going to press this and I want to press all of the pleats one way so I'm just pulling it a little bit not not to stretch it but just to allow everything to sit over nicely. So I'm on the right side of the fabric at the moment but I'm about to turn it over and now just press it from this side and just make sure everything's sitting as straight as you can get it. Pressing is quite important. You can change the shape of things with an iron. Wonderful but not always helpful. Okay so now I've got my six little pleats and at the moment they're all facing straight down and I'm just going to do a little holding stitch so I'm going to do a just a very light finger press I'm not trying to crease this but I'm wanting to do a little stitch as I've done here on my sample I've come down the middle so I'm just going to now stitch just from the top of the pleat to the bottom of the pleat with a little um, straight line there and I'm going to do a little lock stitch so that it's locked off so just a little back stitch just at the top of that little pleat there and then stitch down, holding those pleats down, or tucks, whatever it is that they are. And I'm going to do the same thing now on the two sides, just because normally you probably would have that sewn into something, so just within that seam allowance or about a quarter of an inch in, just do that little row of stitching, you don't need to lock that one off because that's going to end up in a seam. And on this side, rather than try and go against the pleats, I'm actually going to do it from the wrong side of the fabric. So at the moment, what we've done is sewn all those pleats down. We ironed them in that down direction and we've sewn down in that direction. But now I thought for fun, we might, to get this effect of this um, changing direction here, we need to sew them the other way. So I'm going to just grab the iron and now this is where we need to just push that up a little bit with the iron. So just pop those little points over just to get them generally laying that way. Not trying to iron the whole thing flat particularly. And we'll do it on both while we're here. I need to encourage those little points to go over. It's just a rough press at the moment. And now to get my sewing line there to come down the middle, I'm going to fold that over so that my two stitching lines, the center line and this one on the side seam, pretty much line up. And I want my pleats, if they will, to sit all the other way. I'm not very happy about that. That's why we're going to sew them because they don't want to stay there. And again, just a rough finger press so that we know where to sew. And I'll do the other one while I'm here. So we're going to fold that side seam over to so that it sits over that centre row of sewing there. Try and pop these little pleats down. And just do a very rough finger press so that we know where we're trying to sew. And now I'm going to go back to the sewing machine and like we did up the centre going that way, we're going to come down this way on both of those. So as you can see, not terribly hard, a little bit fiddly perhaps. And again, just lock those off so that they don't come undone. And you might be doing a panel of this that fits in with something, in which case you can probably go to the end because it's going to have seams all around it. Or this might be just a little bit of decoration in the middle of, uh, of another panel of fabric. Okay, so we're coming down, make sure all those pleats flip over. And I just like to 
trim my threads as I go, otherwise I find they just annoy me. Now I'm just going to go back to the iron and I'm just going to press up here, not right into where the sewing is, and the same on the other side, and just a little bit more up the middle, and this will just encourage those curves to appear without going up and down. So now I've got two samples the same, so I shall have to think of something to do with those. Um, and I'm thinking of a nice little panel in a bag would be really nice for what I want to do. But I hope that helps with some texture ideas and uh, we'll be back with some other textures another time.